So we are looking at most of the day, starting at 11.25, you see? So we have a few hours on the chart. Nothing, just price. So we don't know where, we don't know what is extreme price, what is average price. We don't know where the midline is. We don't know where the Bollinger, Keltner, whatever else is. We know nothing, just price. Beautiful. Now, the question is, if I had the choice by some magic power to enter anywhere I want, long or short, where would those be? This will be just my taste, but you can play the same game on your machine if you do the same thing. Uh, delete everything except price. And here's what I'm going to do. So let's suppose I would love to go short here, maybe go short here, maybe even here. So I'm just going to put on some shorts with uh, marked up with a circle. Of course, this would be impossible to catch them all. I mean, there's no such thing. But let's say, well, maybe, I don't know, but short here. Sure. Why not? You know, but in a perfect world. Okay. Well, Right now, in hindsight, I don't want to go long here, but if you had asked me on the right edge of the chart, probably I'd be interested in going long here. Of course, it wouldn't have worked. Maybe short here, who knows? Or maybe long here, you know, because at this point, I didn't know the future yet. It could have gone to the sky. Maybe short here, but there's no real flag yet. So. You get the picture, so I'm just, I'm just, oh, that would be a short. Okay, so a short is a circle, a square is a long. Okay, this is in an ideal world, and you can, you can do this on any chart, any instrument. And here's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to put BT on the chart. I want to see the triggers, and I really don't know what I'm going to get. Well, I kind of guess after 15 years, but let's see. So here's the indicator, okay, if I wanted to put on the, strategy i could do that too here we go okay and big arrows so check these out so and then the question is okay how close are my ideal impossible dream world choices how close they are to what our algorithm can actually give you to trade for better or worse so look at this so what i'm seeing and I let you be the judge, okay? So there's no, nothing here. But this was actually, yeah, a bit too. There's no real flag, right? This looks like actually an anti. If you know what an anti is, this is an anti. Now, however, in this area, I think you would agree, this is a, this is a, this is a good short, shorting zone, as it were, right? And we were right on, the indicators are right on top of it. Admittedly, this didn't go, far enough this first one but remember when the computer or algorithm calculates a signal we don't know the future yet this is the last bar on the chart and i think it was reasonable to believe that we might go lower it didn't that's one thing i want to share with you the other thing is that well maybe 10 bars later 15 bars later another one comes and that would have worked and then a third one and here's one little note in bracket. This is why our stop placement close to the opposite Keltner makes sense, about 2.5 ATRs. This is how we usually trade. This is how I think it makes sense. Of course, in the software, you set it any way you want. But look what happens. So we, let's suppose we went short here. Price did come back. Well, we know our good old friend, Price, likes to come back and stop us out. But if we're far enough, that allows us to stay in the otherwise good move. So it's just one more little example and demonstration of why it actually does make sense to not to trade with very tight stops unless you want to suffer a loser and then go short again, maybe under a little psychological strain. So it's much better to keep outside the battle zone, keep our stops outside the battle zone. All right. So. Long story short, here was a good short area, good. Now, in an ideal world, I would have wanted to go long here, but look what happened. The software didn't allow me to. And why is that? In hindsight, it's obvious why. Look, but we're hours and hours later, but now you see what was this area actually around maybe 1 p.m. Lunchtime-ish, not surprising, by the way, lunchtime. Look what lunchtime looks like on the ES, on the indexes. 
this is what the chop filter filters out. This just shows that our chop filter saved us from potentially, in high likelihood, losing trades. So maybe there were, there would have been some long, tr long triggers here, but we have a chop filter. And you know this if you are familiar with our program. If, you're, if not yet, then this is just a little demonstration. We didn't go long here because the chop filter saved us from potential trouble. Okay, and then, well, I mean, who wouldn't want to go short here or short here or short here or even short here? Same story. If you put your stop here, two and a half, eight yards from your entry, then this little comeback wouldn't have hurt you. You would have ended up with a beautiful two, three, four R trade. And this is intraday. This is a fast 500 tick chart. Not really the chart that you hear me often talk about, but I did say that many, many times, but our software is just as powerful if used mindfully on any, any time frame, any market that you, that you plan to use it. Of course, you need to test it out. Okay, so here's first, uh, first couple of minutes of today's workshop. I hope I was able to show you unprepared that the ideal entry point, which is of course in our dream only as traders, and the actual reality that the algorithmic calculation of our product can give you are, well, I don't know how close they are, but maybe, I don't know, 70, 80%, but not bad. And I'm especially glad to see that our chop filter did filter out the signals in the sideways area, all right? We could close this workshop right here because this is everything I ever wanted to show you.